Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Lauren. I'm here once again with another fragrance video. Um, this is not a review video, but instead I'm doing a top 10 spring and summer video for 2012. Um, hopefully you guys checked out my video last year on my top 10 uh, spring summer fragrances. Um, I had a lot of good mentions last year, but this year um, I think the fragrances um, they're they're on another level. They're on a slightly higher level. Now I actually do have some repeat fragrances on uh, this year's list. We actually have five from last year, so we have five old and we have five new. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, just to let you guys know uh, the mindset that I had when I was going about uh, picking these ten fragrances. Um, this is a spring and summer video, but I more so had summer in mind I was thinking you know like really hot weather maybe a hundred or 90 to 100 degrees um, you know I'm going to like a cookout or something like that I'm outdoors I'm wearing something like this maybe like a v-neck white t-shirt or a polo you know white cargo sh excuse me not white cargo shorts but uh, khaki you know uh, cargo shorts something like that and uh, I'm gonna be outdoors I might be perspiring a little bit Something I'm thinking of fragrances that are more suitable for that type of weather and occasion. So you'll find that the fragrances at the top of my list, they're a little bit, um, they're the, my warmer fragrances. And the ones at the bottom of my list, they're more so for maybe spring, but you can definitely pull, pull them off in the summer. Okay. So let's just get started. Um, number 10, number 10, I'm excited about number 10 because this you haven't seen on anyone else's top 10 videos. Uh, I've seen a lot of top 10 spring and summer videos and um, you know, you see some of the same, you know, fragrances, uh, Chanel Allure, um, Chanel Allure Spar, you know, Edition Blanche, all that, whatever. But, <laughs> and I'm not knocking those fragrances, I actually like, um, well, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But um, at my number 10 is actually a layer, a layering um, combination. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with layering, um, a layer is when you have two fragrances um, and you wear them both um, simultaneously. So you may wear one fragrance, say, on your chest and one fragrance, you know, somewhere else on your body. Or you may put both fragrances uh, on the same place. Of your skin now I've experimented a little bit with with layering combinations and I haven't found a lot of successful combos however I found one that I absolutely love I think it's a winner and hopefully you guys concur um, and the layer combination is actually um, Amouage's Jubilation which is this fragrance right here. Uh, this is actually a sample that I have. I just got this sample um, this week, but I've, I've, I've had several samples of this fragrance. And um, this, is, this is actually what the sample bottle looks like. But you know what, that's not important. Here's what it looks like, right? <laughs> if you're anything like me, it, it's not important. But I really like this fragrance. So we have a sample between Jubilation and one of my one of my I'll say it's a favorite uh, fragrances. It's a classic, definitely. Jupe. Okay, you put these two together. Jubilation and Yope. It's spelled Jupe, by the way, but it's pronounced Yope. You put them two together. I call it Jupilation. Okay, Jupilation. All right. I like these fragrances together. It. I. I wore these two. Um, last spring, excuse me, last summer, maybe borderline fall. The weather was still kind of warm. And it, it really works. The thing about this is, this fragrance, it's a fruity, kind of thick fragrance. It has a million notes in it. I'm not going to list all of them, but rose, honey, orange, cinnamon, myrrh, musk. It has all of those, it's millions of notes in it. But it's a thick, kind of fruity fragrance a lot of people like it and um, but it you know it felt like it needed something more like it needs more spice it needs more of a kick Yope is notorious for being this sweet this sweet spicy fragrance 
And the, the reason these two complement each other is because this is thick, but it's kind of subdued. This is more loud, spicy, but still fragrant. So when you put them two together, you have something that's kind of loud and something that's kind of muted, kind of subdued. And together, they just, they really work magic. I love these two together. And uh, so that's my number 10. It's actually a combination. It's a layer uh, between Yope and Jubilation. If you guys have this have these two fragrances, please give the layering a try. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, I'm going to move on to number nine. Okay, number nine is Cartier Declaration Lessons. Now you guys might remember this from last year's list, um, and if you remember last year's list, you remember that this was actually number two on last year's list. Wow! So imagine, imagine that this fell to number nine. But look, this is actually still a really good fragrance. Um, some of the notes in this one are orange blossom, sandalwood, amber, la lavender, excuse me, musk, tea, lime, vetiver, geranium, and lemon. Now, this one is great for the spring. Uh, you can definitely pull this one off in the summer as well. This one, at the top, you get like the citruses. You get that, the orange, the, um, the, the, the lemon. You get those, you get those citruses. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a dark citrusy fragrance. It's not an airy, light, you know, lemony. No, it's, you get the citruses, but then it's kind of dark. And it definitely has texture to it. Um, it's this is a fragrance that, um, you, like I said last year, you can definitely wear this with a T-shirt, warmer weather. Um, but you can also wear this in the office. It's got it's got um, it's got a casual kind of formal flair to it as well. Um, and you some sometimes you don't get the the woody spiciness of this, um, but it's got, um, I had some notes on, where, is, where are my notes? But forget about it, I don't need notes. Um, it's got, um, it's got a formalness to it, but then you, the, the woody notes you get from this, um, maybe not offhand, but they are there, they are there and they kind of add to, to give it like a stronger uh, base. So it's not just citrus, but you got that more buttoned down. You got those sandalwoods. Um, you got the geranium that kind of gives it a more earthy, a more earthy kind of feel to it. So at number nine is um, Cartier's Declaration Lessons. Okay, at number eight is a fragrance that I haven't had a lot of time with, but I still really, really like it. And I got this one in this week, and the fragrance is. Um, another ammo wash fragrance and by the way I realized that my <laughs> that my list is actually kind of pricey because the ammo wash fragrances are all over 200 they're about 250 on up yeah that, that's a little pricey but um but they're all so good you know they're all so good and this one Dia Dia um, let's see how they define Dia Dia Luxury day wear, a fragrance that is both sophisticated and vibrant, a perfect complement of Amouage Gold. Now, Dia is a light kind of woody scent. And when you think of, um, let me actually put this on, when you think of spring and summer, you may not be thinking of woody, but it's a light woody scent, um, and but it still manages to be fresh. Um, it's It's got like a spicy tea kind of, vibe going on and it's not um it's not too different from like a gucci pour home two type of scent uh not exactly similar but it's got it's got i'm gonna list some of the the notes cystus uh bigard uh, or bigard bigarade i don't even know how you say that cardamom frankincense labdanum peony ylang lang oris plum uh, plum blossom, vetiver, leather, patchouli, amber, and palisander. Now, you may definitely get some leather in this, um, and you know, amongst all the other uh, notes that I listed. But it's 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 a really nice scent. Um, I wore this yesterday. I gave this a full wearing yesterday, and I really enjoyed it. So 
uh, guys, definitely give the uh, a try if you like more of a woody type of scent. This is a woody scent that you can pull off in this the spring and the summer. Um, it's not too loud, um, but it, it does have, um, I believe it has decent uh, sillage or sillage as a lot of us Americans call it. Um, some people have talked about the longevity on this one. Um, I, I, I smelt it all day. I didn't smell it strong uh, in the later hours of the day, but I, I, I was able to smell it in, uh, in the evening uh, quite a bit. So I think it's, uh, I think it's a, definitely worth trying. So that was Diamant by Amouage. Okay, number seven, we have another um, <laughs> Amouage fragrance. So you guys, I, clearly I'm a little biased towards the Amouage house. Um, I, I, I love I love Emma Watch. Here's a bottle that I actually own. I don't not a sample, but I actually own this one. And this is the first Emma Watch fragrance that I fell in love with. Now, what can I say about this one? What can I say about this? I, I absolutely love Reflection. I'm not even sure why it's not number one. <laughs> um, but then again, I, I can tell you why. This is not. This is not the first fragrance I'll reach for if it's 100 degrees out. Um, I, I, would, I would reach for it in the summer and in the spring, but probably not first. There are other fragrances I would reach for first. But reflection, let's see, you have rosemary, red pepper berries, um, bitter orange leaves, neroli, oris, jasmine, ylang lang, vetiver, patchouli, sandalwood, cedarwood. And, and you'll probably notice that some of the notes aren't much different from the notes in some of the other Amouage fragrances. They seem to have some to share a lot of the, the same notes. What you definitely get from this, you definitely get the bitter orange leaves. You do get that. Um, I don't know if it, you, pepper berries, you get pepper at the top, but it's a smooth pepper. You get the sandalwood from this one. This is one of the smoothest, most refined uh, fragrances you, you're gonna come across. Um, the Diamant, the Reflection, these are some of the fragrances that you're going to wear to the more uh, formal events that, that you may attend in the spring and the summer. Um, these are the scents you're going to wear with maybe, you know, a nice clean, you know, white collared shirt, maybe a tie. You're going to wear with a suit on, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're wearing your best uh, clothes, you're gonna you're gonna reach for the DMA. You're gonna reach for the reflection. Um, you can probably pull this off with a T-shirt or something like that. But I would highly recommend these fragrances for your more formal upscale event. Okay, so that's uh, reflection at number seven. Okay, number six is another fragrance that I absolutely love. Oh, by the way, reflection was on the list last year, and so was this. And if you guys remember last year, uh, last year I had a smaller bottle and I had less of the juice in the bottle. Um, and, and that bottle, yeah, it's, it's, it's done. So I had to get another one. And actually this fragrance, I, I believe Gucci discontinued this one. I have no idea why because it's an absolute gorgeous fragrance. I love it. This fragrance, I think you can wear spring, summer, and fall. Winter, maybe with an extra one or two spritzes, but um, I love this fragrance. Oh yeah, I could wear this. Last time I wore it, which was last Friday, I got a compliment. Uh, and so, any, anyways, I love this fragrance. Um, this one you get violet leaves, you get cinnamon. A lot of people uh, say it's like a black tea or like a chai tea, that type of vibe uh, uh, going on with it. Um, bergamot. Um, pimento, you get that, you, you get the pimento, um, woodsy, uh, you know, all, all these things, musk, myrtle, just, you know, it has a lot of notes in it, but it's, <laughs> I can't say enough about Gucci Pour Home too. I love, and look at this bottle, look at this. If for nothing else, the bottle is, just look at this, look at it. It's awesome, I love this fragrance. Um, and I'll definitely have to stock up on this if it is, in fact, discontinued. As I have um, read online, it, it seems to be discontinued. And um, I'll have to definitely stock up on this. This one is great for the spring. 
So that is number six. Okay, number five is Burberry. I actually used to love this fragrance when I first got it. I don't have a whole lot of it left, but um, Burberry. And it actually has the notes right here on the back. It's a woody aromatic. Top notes, bergamot, lavender, thyme, uh, mint, heart notes are geranium, sandalwood, moss. Base notes are amber, tonka bean, and cedarwood. I like this scent. This is another one that I, I think is great for the more, your more casual, formal type of event. It's, um, this is one of my white shirt scents. Like when I want to, when I want to project clean, you know, white shirt, maybe khaki slacks, you know what I'm saying? Casual or to dress shoes or something like that. This is one of the first ones I consider, as I said last year, um, you can wear this one, you know, if you, if you own, say, Bur uh, not Burberry, but uh, Dolce & Gabbana, Pour Homme, or uh, Creed's Millezime Imperial, the same, um, the same attire, the same occasion you would wear those two for, you could definitely wear this one for. Um, this one is, it's, there aren't... Uh, there aren't any citrus. Well, yeah, bergamot, but um, it's not it's not overwhelmingly uh, citrus. But it's you got the citrus. People say uh, mint. I don't know if I really get the mint overwhelmingly, but it's um, it's probably in there somewhere. A smooth sandalwood. This one is just a really nice fragrance, so I, I highly recommend it. It's a bit of a classic. Um, Burberry from it. I don't have the top, by the way. When I got it, I got it as a tester. I never got the top, but that's who cares. You know, you're not wearing the top, <laughs> you're wearing the juice. So, um, at number five, that's Burberry for men. Number four is Hermazon's Pample Mousse Rose. Now, I actually just have a sample of that. I got that one from Nordstrom's, and I actually had an official sample before. Um, this one has one of the nicest openings that I've ever come across. Um, if we're talking about um, lights, um, light, citrusy, summery type of fragrances. This is a great fragrance for the summer. Off the bat, you get this bright um, grapefruit, and you get this rose. So imagine you have you have rose, which is, so you get like a bit of a floralness to this, and then you get this crisp grapefruit, like you just peel the grapefruit open. I mean, this one is like awesome for uh, spring and summer um, I don't know what else I can say about this one definitely give it a try some people have um, have said that um, the longevity is a little iffy um, I haven't given this a lot of wear um, it's a fragrance I've played around with um, uh, from time to time but um, I haven't given it a lot of wear so I can't really speak on the longevity uh, I do remember the first day that I that I sampled it. I remember maybe two or so hours after I applied it. I wasn't able to smell it uh, very uh, loudly, very very strong. But um, if we're talking about like top notes, if we're talking about just like you're just going to an event, you just need a scent for maybe an hour or so. You know, this one, you know, definitely wear. You might need to keep it in the car for you know an additional spritz or two. But this one I would highly recommend. So that's uh, number four, Hermazon's Pample Moose Rose. Okay, so we're winding down. Oh, we're at 18 minutes old now. Okay, let's speed this one up. Number three is actually what was my number one fragrance last year. And this is Cartier's Declaration Cologne. This fragrance I still think is, is awesome. It's a, lovely, it's a lovely scent. Another scent that some people have uh said that you know it may not have the most longevity but i actually i still recall a saturday that i wore this and it gave me at least six to eight hours um it was it was quite faint after say three or four hours but it was still there this one you never tried a, a ginger like this this one has it starts off with citrus and ginger those are the two most prominent notes now there are other notes listed well actually it says um, bergamot and orange, those are both citrus. Um, a mandarin orange, uh, that's citrus again. Spice, 
uh, jasmine, ginger, cardamom, coriander, vetiver, and you get, you, I can see all of those things being in there, but overwhelmingly you just get citrus, just think citrus and think ginger. Um, there's some some Chanel Allure fragrances that people are like, oh, ginger, and I think uh, there's a Dior fragrance. Um, I think it's Dior Spar, um, or is it the Intense? I don't even know, but one of those fragrances, people talk about the ginger in them. This puts any any fragrance out there that, that claims ginger, this one puts them to shame, I promise you. And some people may think, like, why is he, like, what's so great about ginger? Um, the thing is, though, it's different. You know, summertime, you smell some of the same scents, you know, the same aromas. You know, you get, you know, the lemony type of fragrances, like maybe like an Izzy Miyake, or you may get like a lime, you may get like the aquatic type of, you know, the cool waters, those type of scents, but you don't get ginger. You don't get a fr like a, a freshly cut ginger. And um, in this one, you do, and it's beautiful. It's, it's great. And so my number three fragrance is, um, or for the spring and summer, is Cartier's Declaration Cologne. Okay, so we're winding down here. Number two, number two, number two comes from the Creed House. Number two is Creed's Millezine. No, I got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Y'all thought I was going to say Millezine Imperial. Why? Because everyone has Millezine Imperial on their top 10 list. Oh, Millezine Imperial, it's so great. It's so awesome. It's, 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 it's actually not. Okay. And I actually like the fragrance. I like it, but it's not that special. It's not that good. Okay. And the thing about it is, you know, when I first started, when I first started doing review videos, I said that I would, I would try to promote fragrances that aren't as well, you know, you know, hailed, lauded, or no, not lauded, but hailed and you know, like critically acclaimed or whatever. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be, uh, you know, a promoter of the the lesser known fragrances. Creed actually has a a stepchild of a fragrance, if you will, because no one talks about this one. I don't know why, but um, and I actually, I actually just have an oil to the fragrance. Can you guys see this? Read this. Royal water. Now this is actually this is not an official oil, but um, and I normally don't buy oils of fragrances, even the really pricey ones, because they often aren't able to fully capture uh, the scent of the actual uh, design house. You know, like you may, you may have seen it like a, going to a kiosk and they'll, you know, like now the, the, the typical run of the mill scents, the Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Le Mans, the, you know, the really popular scents, they can get pretty close to those. But um, um, the more upscale scents, like the Amouages, for example, they may not be able to fully duplicate uh, these scents. And um, and so, but I've played around with some of the oils before here and there. I remember I actually bought an, a Millezine Imperial oil, uh, and that's funny because I was just kind of clowning it. But I actually bought a Millezine Imperial oil, and at the top it kind of smelled like it, but at the bottom it got woody, and so it wasn't really true to the actual scent. So I was I was kind of wary about you know buying oils to these uh, scents. Um, but I was reading a review of, uh, some of the oils on this one website that I, that I bought this one from. It's actually called HaywardEnterprises.com. And, um, one person commented how closely their interpretation of Royal Water smells to the real Royal Water. And I was like, really? I said, I actually like Royal Water. I said, let me give it a try. So I went and got this tiny little sample, and I promise you guys, like I've tried Royal Water several times, and this smells just like Royal Water. There's absolutely no difference. I was surprised when I first tried it because it was it was uncanny the similarities. Now, 
See, I'm the type of person I actually like to see the bottle. I wanna, I wanna buy a designer. But I know I'm getting off topic here. Pardon me, but I wanna buy. I wanna see the Cartier Declaration. I wanna see the, you know, the Amouage writing here. The little whatever the symbol. The I wanna. You know, like all of this is lovely to me, you know? So I'm not big on oil. If there's a fragrance I really like, I'll save and spend the money on the actual fragrance. But this oil is, I it smells so much like it. And um, so I'll probably hold on to this until I, I have the money to get the actual royal water. But number two is royal water, um, <laughs> if, that's, if that wasn't clear uh, from this whole uh, spiel, this ramble tangent that I'm on. But uh, yeah, number two is actually Royal Water. When I first tried this at the Creed store, I, I said to myself, why well, why is this not talked about? Why is it not spoken about? No one, There's no hype about this one. But I promise you guys, when it's warm, I remember last summer, I would wear this, my white shirts, my, you know, my white t-shirts, and my in my cargoes and stuff like that and well the samples that I had and I mean it's so appropriate for when the weather gets warm man it's so Miller's Imperial is okay but this one I think takes the cake now it's a unisex fragrance I think uh, Creed put it out in uh, honor of like Prince Harry or like the royal family I don't even know Princess Diana I think they uh, they changed the bottle. They updated the bottle a few years ago in in memory of her, or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Do a search or something like that. But it's there. It, it's somehow supposed to be um, a tribute to the royal family or something like that. But all I, well, yeah, it's called royal water. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, I promise you guys, this one is really nice. It's a floral scent. Uh, some of the notes. <laughs> and it's funny, I remember looking this up and there were only a few notes on this one. It says, fresh citrus infusion with peppermint, juniper berry, basil, musk, and ambergris. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's unisex. Some people have compared it to uh, CK1. Um, and I've tried that uh, years ago. I didn't really, uh, I didn't really get the, the similarities between the two. But this one is really nice. It's a floral scent. It's not the most masculine scent, but you don't get feminine from this one. I promise you, you don't get feminine. Guys, please, 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 please give Royal Water a try. Give me some feedback, please. Let me know what you guys think about this one. I think this is one of the 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 hidden gems out there it's it doesn't get the height that it deserves but it's really nice if you're looking for something that's good for summer um something that's not too loud something that'll stay with you um for hours um and this one is i think good for uh formal wear as well um but it's 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 t-shirt wear but you can pull it off in casual and formal settings as well um, I know I have, and um, I just can't say enough about this one. Uh, so number two is Royal Water. And number one, number one um, is a fragrance that I also, I don't have the fragrance, but I have a sample, an official sample from um, from the Perfume Court. And uh, I'm going to be like all the other reviewers and hold stuff up really close, which is, I used to think it was silly, but <laughs> anyways. This is, I still don't know how to fully pronounce this guy's name, Maison Francis Curtijan, I believe you say it, Apom, Apom. Now, a few years ago, I think this came out in 2010, uh, it, 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 there, was, there was a bit of hype on this one. Um, this is actually the same perfumier. This guy, he, um, he's the nose behind uh, the super popular Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamar fragrance, okay? Maison Francis Curtijan. And um, a few years ago, we came out with uh, APOM, and that's A P O M, which actually stands for a piece of me. Um, this scent uh, it goes for about, what was it, 155 for a 70 milliliter bottle. And uh, pardon me if I didn't mention prices uh, thus far, but you guys can like do Google searches and stuff like that and, and find the prices. But um, this one, uh, I finally got my nose in it uh, a 
couple months ago and I think I think it's it's just really nice um, at the top you get orange blossom this this is the one that actually didn't have many notes in it I looked it up and there was like three notes listed uh, orange blossom amber and cedar wood and um, it's just it's just really nice I mean if this is probably between this and royal water if we're talking about you know 90 to 100 degrees I'm wearing a white t-shirt you know some khaki shorts or something like that uh, I'm gonna be outside this is one of the this this is one of the first fragrances that I, I would go for um, it's definitely on my to buy list I think the longevity is pretty good uh, I've I've given this full wearings and it's it's been with me the whole day um, so I definitely would recommend um, a palm it's got that bright crisp uh, orange blossom that citrus uh, right at the top and I mean it's just a great scent so that's a, that's actually my number one scent which surprised me I actually I, I knew I was going with these these ten fragrances um, but I, I wasn't sure what order I was going with and it was only today that I sat down and I said mm, how am I gonna do this and this is the one that I said yeah if it's really warm I'm probably going with this so that is my top 10 list I hope you guys enjoyed it I um, I have to mention a few uh, honorable mentions um, Ferragamo Black F or Ferragamo F Black or however you say that um, I've, I've played around with that a few times um, I've had a couple of samples of it it smells a lot like uh, Chanel Allure Ohm but it's got like a little extra to it um, that one is something that is one you guys should definitely give a try um, Izzy Miyake I think I mentioned that last year as an honorable mention once again it's a really nice scent um, the only thing is it's, it's, it's very popular so I'm kind of like eh, about really popular scents, but that one is definitely good. And <laughs> believe it or not, as much as I hate when people mention uh, Chanel Allure fragrances, but the newest Chanel Allure fragrance, which is a Chanel Allure Sport Edition Blanche or Chanel Allure Spar, as everyone says, Edition Blanche. Um, that one is actually pretty good. It actually smells a lot like One Million. Um, there are some differences, but there are definitely some similarities. So give that one a try. Give the new one a try, and uh, let me know what you think. Um, and CK1 Shock, CK1 Shock, which is now actually discontinued. I mean, it was out for maybe like a year or so, and then you know they kind of pulled it from the shelves. Um, but that one actually smells. It's funny, when I first tried it, I thought like this is like a mix between, a perfect mix between Jean-Paul Gaudier Le Mans and One Million. It smells like it's right down, the, it's right in the middle. And this one actually, these are all for the CK1 Shock, the One Million, and the uh, Chanel Allure Sport Edition Blanche. They all kind of have that same scent. Um, but the CK1 Shock, it has more of an apple cinnamon uh, note to it than does the uh, One Million or the uh, Chanel Allure. So those are my honorable mentions uh, for this year. Okay, guys. So I was rambling for 32 minutes, going on 33 minutes. Pardon me, but you know it's been a while. It's been a while. You know, you guys know I, I'm very sporadic with these videos. So I guess I had a lot to say. So uh, pardon, pardon, um, pardon the the length. But um, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please comment. Let me know what you guys think about my list, um, and let me know what's on your list for this spring and summer. All right, you guys. Uh, this is Larwin, and I'm signing out. Bye.